nearly every breakthrough in the history of mankind could all have been in danger of looking ridiculous before they were achieved. Even the first motor car was considered a joke. That's the nature of creation. father was uh, an aeronautical engineer and actually he inspired me to get into model aircraft building. The feeling of, of launching these little balsa wood and tissue paper aircraft and then watching them soar completely silently up and down the hill, I, it was just magical. The loss of my father when I was 15 did have obviously a massive impact on me. I suppose in some small ways, a lot of what I've sought to do is to make up for some of the unfulfilled ambition, I think, that my father left. I would say the experience of my childhood probably pushed me down a route of wanting to create a safe, secure family environment before I unleashed the maverick innovator in me, because I know that that pathway is more about failure than it is success. I had a very conventional job in the City of London. I used to get on my commute at about 5 a.m. During those commutes, I would just fill notebooks full of ideas. I had this vision that potentially, if you focused enough training and attention of the human mind and balance system, Maybe we contain a decent amount of strength and capability in order to control flight. It seemed to me to be an untapped area of opportunity. When you want to turn an idea on a sketch pad into something really interesting, you have to identify what is a really simple first step. That, I guess, you could count as the original Mark I arm mount. And the idea was that you could put an engine in here and test what the thrust was going to be like. Right up on the wall here, we've got some of the really earliest examples. That was the suit up there that I flew at the first TED talk. Essentially, you've got the gas turbine here on the back, and uh, you've got the fuel tank system here. This is the smart helmet. This actually projects up into the uh, view of the wearer, how fast you're going, how high you are. It's all about what can you procure very simply and cheaply and quickly now that will help you make the first step. The starting ethos was one of constantly testing and changing things. Because it's very loud and you can feel the thousand horsepower in your chest, the immediate assumption is it's tremendously dangerous. If you squeeze those throttles, you will be a thousand feet in no time. You don't do that. If you see a problem or a challenge as an insight into something that you weren't expecting, then yes, that leads to discovery. The particular turning point that is not only my favourite, but also is one of the most important, was that first six second wobbly, but clearly definable flight. No! That was it! I think a large part of that expression on my face was actually joyous, landing it well and proving that we could actually do this. And I, and I kind of, it dawned on me at that moment that, that if we can do that, we can go for a lot longer and a lot higher, a lot further. It's not the best sound I've heard. What is it? It's just blown up one ECU and it starts smoking the others. All the batteries are saying that they're struggling as well. This is ridiculous. I've never had so many things not work. I don't know what's going on. Hold on, hold on, I've got it. Yes. We've got lights. If this goes green, we're really cooking too. Here we go. This journey is always going to be about trying new avenues, new approaches and new things. It's quite a strange experience. 
despite the thundering power and, and kind of chaos around you, it is almost peaceful. When athletes describe being in flow state where they are utterly focused on the task at hand, that's the closest analogy to describe what it's like flying. Oh, wow. Wow. It's just an absolute joy to be skimming along the water at 50 kilometers an hour. It's lovely and stable. The maneuverability is great. The power level's fine. Um, yeah, that felt really nice. I think now is just the right time to go and put it all together. We're embarking on a whole program of taking the suit to a variety of different locations and scenarios. Beyond what we've done already, to keep the same spirit of learning from problems that will no doubt occur. And it'll be fascinating to see how it performs and what evolutions and what innovations come out of that experience. You're ready to go, yeah? hovering around and stuff and you get a problem where you can just quickly land or even if you fall, you just fall a few feet off the ground. But hammering along at 35, 40 miles an hour along a runway behind a car, that's, um, yeah, that's a bit more committing. How was that first run? Yeah, good. Running at speed over concrete like that is, you've got to be mindful that if you get a failure, that's going to be akin to a nasty motorbike crash, so we tend to not do too much of that. <laughs> Something we hadn't tested before was maneuverability at speed through a tight, confined space. Flying down that tree-lined avenue provided a really good test to prove that we could actually navigate such a tight, complex course. That was really useful. chaos and fury and noise comes from these. And they look like innocent little biscuit tins when they're in this state. I mean, that's 170 horsepower, that engine alone, ejecting air at 1,000 miles an hour out the end and uh, running at about 750 degrees centigrade inside the combustion chamber. They're quite intensive little beasts. year ago, I genuinely would never have imagined we would have got to quite this level of maneuverability and control. I'm not resting here. I think this is only the beginning of the journey.